Hello and welcome to the Scent Academy. I'm Melanie Jane and today's episode is all about pipettes. Riveting, I know, but pipettes, which ones should you choose? So let's get going with my favourite, the 3ml pipette with markings and it uh, goes up in half a mil increments and I'll show you, after I've shown you uh, variations of pipettes, how to use a pipette properly, but you can see that the majority of the liquid goes into the body of the pipette. And this is good, it's like a good little cheat um, thing as well for people that are just beginning and used to um, drops and mills and now they are transitioning um, into weights uh, using grams and scales. So this is a good one for beginners and it's my top recommendation. And they're not very expensive. I, when I was in Dubai, I paid, I think, 25 dirhams for 500 uh, pipettes, and I got them from a medical supply place um, because they sold them wholesale. So try to get them wholesale because it'll be a lot cheaper because you'll be going through a lot of them. And um, I know I've got people uh, probably shouting at me going, why are you using plastic? But this is what they do in professional perfume houses. So here's another one. And this has got no markings on it. The pipette is a lot thinner than the other one because the majority of the liquid goes into the bulb. Now, for accuracy's sake, they're both pretty much the same. Um, if you actually look at the pipette, you can see even just like that standing, and you see there's no liquid coming out. And the same with the other one. So I've got it standing like that. It's got a little bit of liquid left inside. It's just standing and it's not going to come out until I actually push it. So this is what a lot of people are very afraid of when they first start using pipettes, um, you know, and they think it's going to be like all over the place. Do make sure that you do protect your surface though as well that you're using. So those are two types of pipettes, disposable. And now here is another one. And this is from the bottles that I love to use, the Miron Violet glass bottles. And I buy them. You can have different um, tops and different, you can have screw, screw caps and sprays and myths and all that kind of thing. But I use these for my studio. You can see the bottles behind. These are full of diluted oils. For a diluted collection, it's okay. The rubber bulb won't deteriorate that much. Now, I don't know about the quality of other ones, perhaps amber ones and the cheaper bottles that you might buy, they might degrade quite quickly, but I am adamant about Miron Violet glass bottles. I've got a whole blog article about it, um, so I don't want to bang on about that too much. But I want to talk about the pipettes. Now, the same really with these, the liquid won't really come out until you actually squeeze it, I'm squeezing it very, very gently. So, um, you know, if you wanted to use these and they do look pretty in your studio, uh, then you can do because remember we're using scales as well. But I find that the drops in these are not as minute. So if you want to get something really accurate and you want to use like perhaps like half a drop of something, then the plastic ones are going to be your best friend for accuracy uh, when, you're, when you're wanting something very, very small. If you want something like 0, 0.0, two grams or something, uh, which is approximately one drop. Um, and these might be a little bit more, maybe not as accurate. So I would use these for playing, uh, for experimenting, etc. But when it comes to actually making and creating a final perfume, then I would use the plastic pipettes. Um, now, I want to talk to you about how to use a pipette because I see a lot of things in my classes and people are very afraid of them, again, like I said. Uh, now, can you see this here? Now, this is just split a little bit. Uh, and that's what happens with overusing uh, pipettes as well and constantly, constantly squeezing them is they have a tendency to split here. So that's another reason why they're reusable. But I've just seen something. I saw something on YouTube. I have to tell you this. I saw something on YouTube and I've seen somebody and they're making perfumes in their studio and they use plastic pipettes, which is great. That's what professional perfumers do. You'll never see them using glass. Um, but I've seen them get the pipette and then tie it to the bottle with an elastic band so they can just keep using it. So they're saving money, but you know, it's really bad practice. If you're gonna use that pipette maybe in the next hour or two or something like that, then perhaps, but even in perfumery, they don't do that, they'll chuck it away. There's always a chance it's gonna get touched by something, contaminated by something. But even if it's there for like, say a day or a week or a month, uh, 
any residue that's minuscule that you can't even see with the naked eye is going to be oxidizing in here so the next time you go well look at all the money and all the plastic that i'm saving on my pipettes but you're ruining your liquid that you just paid 300 dollars for because your oxidized liquid in here is now rancid and you're now mixing it with your beautiful precious oils so uh, please use plastic and please do not reuse them, do not, even if it's the same perfume oil, it doesn't matter, don't keep reusing the same plastic pipette. On to another thing, glass pipettes, I've seen two types of people using glass pipettes. One uses one pipette for all of their collection. So, and they'll, in between using it, they'll wash it in alcohol and then they'll transfer it to another bottle and then wash it again and it's never completely clean and now the alcohol let's say if it's my wine glass let's say if it's in a jug full of alcohol and you're squeezing your glass pipette in here and washing it and washing it then you've just got dirty liquid in there and you're washing it it's like it's like trying to wash your finest china in dirty dishwasher you know water and uh, you know it's not going to do is it so um, please don't do that. But also I've seen people going, well, I've got one pipette for each oil. You know, and my argument here is, well, yes, I, I have the same thing in these bottles, one glass pipette per oil, but that's because I'm using this attachment. I'm not contaminating it. There's no chance that I'm going to contaminate, you know, that liquid. And what they do at the end of the day is they'll leave it out. So now it's oxidizing again, or they'll clean it with alcohol, which takes forever. Um, and then there's always going to be a chance that that pipette then is going to, you, and you will, trust me, you might just line it up along all your bottles, but then something's going to happen. Your cat's going to jump on the mantelpiece, or he's going to jump on your, all of your bottles and you're going to get all mixed up and you're not going to go which pipette goes with which bottle. You're contaminating everything. It's just not worth it. Don't use glass pipettes, even if you just use one for the same perfume all of the time. And don't use one pipette for all the collection. That's like a cardinal sin. So um, these are the only glass pipettes that I recommend as long as you keep it inside the bottle so it's not oxidizing throughout the day and night. It's staying inside the liquid. It's airtight, you know, and, um, and you keeping it on the same bottle so you know who it belongs to. Um, but my recommendation, plastic pipettes, please. Can I bang on about it anymore? I probably could go on for about another half an hour, but I won't. So, um, plastic pipettes, how to use them. I've seen people be quite afraid of plastic pipettes. And I want to show you a little trick there with the oils. It's not coming out, as you saw. And I had to touch it lightly to get one single drop, one single drop. You can use it from any angle, but the angle that I prefer is actually this one. Okay, but I've watched, this is what I've seen some people doing. So they'll go and they'll be like, right, I want to put this and I want to put it in here. So I need to transfer it from here to here. So let's do it. So they'll get the prepare and then they'll go, oh, 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 it's going to fall out. It's going to fall out. It's going to fall out. Oh, okay, I've got it. Oh, right, hang on now, now. And then it all starts to fall out and they get confused and they squeeze the pipette. Um, and uh, yeah, it's um, so easy to use. Just, it will take you just a few minutes to get practice. And don't practice with oils. Practice with um, alcohol, first of all, um, because then you can reuse that pipette for your alcohol um, or practice with water but don't practice with your oils when it comes to the balancing so all you need to do is if you want to weigh let's say one gram of something one gram um, my, is approximately one ml now it's not because it's different so it's same same but different but it's around about there so you know if you want one gram you don't need to put all of that in there because that's way too much so I would put the liquid in Go down to the one ml and then let it go. And then shake it at the lid, can you see? I'm shaking so I'm getting no drips. I'm not squeezing, I'm holding it as light as a feather. And then transfer it and then start to squeeze. Just like that, yeah? So when you want your pipette, and what another thing you don't do is don't, 
put your pipette in like that, just go bam, there's your pipette in your liquid. Now I'm going to squeeze because you're just creating, I'll show you, you're just creating air bubbles. Okay, so people will go like that and then they'll go, and, they, and I'm like, what are you doing? You don't like making a sandwich. So there you go. So what you do is you've got an empty pipette. Here's your liquid. Hold it at this angle. What's that? Like a, well, that's 90 degrees. So 45, maybe 45 degrees, maybe 40 degrees or something like that. Okay. You're going to go into your liquid. Before you go into your liquid, start to squeeze. Squeeze the pipette. Squeeze. And just squeeze it. That's all you need to do. Squeeze it. And let go. You try it again. Liquid, empty pipette, 45, 40 degree, 30 degree angle, whatever you're comfortable with, but just on a little bit of an angle. Empty pipette, liquid, into the liquid. No, we don't do it like that. What do we do? Liquid, empty pipette, squeeze empty pipette, dip and let go. We could make it a little song. Should we try a little song? Liquid, empty pipette, squeeze, empty pipette, dip, let go. Liquid, empty pipette, squeeze, dip, and let go. Again? Have you got it? Yeah, of course you have. One more time. Go on, I want to make a song. Let's put some tunes on in the background. Liquid, empty pipette, squeeze, dip, and let go. And that's it. You've got your liquid in there. You can transfer it without it dripping all over the floor because as long as you don't squeeze it, nothing is going to come out. And that's it. And you'll use just that. One drop weighs, depending on the, how heavy the liquid is, because liquids are different, um, different weights. So, so instant, if, for instance, like, Patchouli will be heavier than bergamot. So, one drop, can you see it's like, that's accurate, it's so accurate. And it's one drop, weighs approximately 0 0.12 grams. Now something I've heard uh, someone say is that these are my scales. And they said uh, that liquids, the pipettes, depending on what angle you put them at, they weigh differently. So if you were to drop it like this, and then you were to drop it like this, it would weigh differently. So I'm going to try that theory now. Are you ready? I am going to zero my scales, and I'm going to put five drops and see how much it weighs, and I'm going to put it at this angle. One, two, three, four, five, and it weighs 0 0.10 gram. Now I'm going to pour it and zero the scales, and now I'm going to pour it at this angle. One, two, three, four, five. Indeed, it's different, 0 0.08. So it's actually a different weight with the same amount of drops at different angles, ha! Huh? But let's bust that theory. Because now I'm going to do the same again at the same angle, 0 0.08 at an upright angle, five more drops. One, two, three, four, five. 0 0.09. Same angle, same drops, different weight. Actually, it's gone up to now where it's fluctuating between the 9 and the 10. So you can see that it doesn't make a difference whether it's at that angle or whether it's straight to how much liquid is coming out. It all depends on how much you're squeezing it. <laughs> that's it. So that's why we use weights in perfumery and not drops because it's a lot more accurate when it comes to your perfumes. And if you're going to now magnify that, 
by a hundred volume or a thousand volume now, just those few little drops, imagine how much your perfume blend is going to fluctuate when you're making it if you're using drops. It's not going to be consistent because you're going to be using different ratios every time because your drops are going to be weighing differently. So you're going to have more liquid of this in this and you're going to have more patchouli in it and your customers will be like, oh my God, that doesn't smell like the perfume that I bought last time. You know, and you can't put it down to like, you know, changing your formula because of IFRA. Um, so yes, please use scales. You can buy them off Amazon. Um, you can buy German or Japanese ones. Don't buy Chinese ones. They are not reliable. Um, I get these for my students. Uh, they're Tanita brand, so they're Japanese. They're really accurate. Um, yeah, they're pretty good. You probably could get better with some German ones. And um, if you want proper perfumers ones, they're going to cost you upwards of like 400 euros or something more than a thousand. So if, if you want to make the investment, if you're really serious about perfumery, then definitely invest. If you know that this is your profession and your passion, and this is what you're going to do forever, then invest in the professional perfumers scales. But if not, then, um, you know, these ones will actually do. They come with a battery. I've seen USB operated ones. Um, I'm not sure about that, but um, they come with a battery. Make sure that you calibrate them before you start using them so that you get the correct weights but that's it and that's about pipettes today and then when you want to finish using your pipette you just squeeze all the liquid out and then put it in the bin i'm sorry i'm not saving the planet i know but i'm saving your precious oils so that's it from the scent academy today and i hope that you enjoyed that little long video but yeah it was it's just really important for me to um to get you to understand that um reusing plastic pipettes no 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 really bad practice uh reusing glass pipettes really bad practice uh using one pipette for your whole collection and washing it with alcohol in between it's a sin in perfumery um so the only ones that i would recommend is plastic pipettes the 3ml ones that you can buy buy them wholesale a lot cheaper or you can get these ones as long as you know you're not leaving that pipette out on your table you know to um you know dry and oxidize and ruin and then ruin whatever surface that you have there as well so that's it two choices either this or this but this one wins for me i'll see you next time at the scent academy Hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer next time. See you later.